shadows of night, the world rolls into light. What is this miracle of light? We are not yet sure, but we have learned much about its nature, how it travels in all directions from its source, how it is received, and how it may be controlled. To begin our brief story of light phenomena, let us study the simple waves formed by a pebble tossed into a quiet pond. Those waves ringing outward from the splash are somewhat like the waves of energy that spread in all directions from a source of light. These spreading waves travel outward in straight lines, so we may represent light in the form of radiating beams. There are many things we can do to control beams of light. We can change their direction, or bring them to a focus. So far, we have been talking about ordinary white light. But what we see as white light is really an amazing mixture of colors. For the study of light, we can reduce the number of colors to the three primaries. Red, green, blue. Each color has its own wavelength. White light is a complex mixture of different wavelengths. We can control color using filters that absorb some colors while permitting others to pass. The red filter absorbs green and blue. The green filter stops the red and blue. And the blue filter blocks the red and green. These simple methods of controlling light by color filters are familiar to all of us. But there is another, newer, more startling type of light control made possible by polarization. These Polaroid light polarizing filters are transparent, practically colorless. When two Polaroid filters are arranged in a certain way, they permit light to pass through or they can be arranged so as to cut down the light a little, a lot, or to a complete blackout. By their ability to control light intensity accurately, Polaroid filters find many applications in science, industry, and everyday life. For an understanding of light polarization, let's first find out something about light vibrations using the simplest illustrations that will help explain their behavior, even if at the same time we have to take a few liberties with rigorous optical theory. As we have seen, the ripples on the pond are similar in one way to the waves of light. But watch the cork, how it bobs up and down. This tells us something else about the nature of waves. It is evident that water waves have an up and down motion as well as a direction of travel. And so it is with light. These waves really vibrate at right angles to their direction. And these vibrations take place in all directions at right angles to the path of light, as we can illustrate by imagining that we are looking head on at a beam of light. For simplicity, we'll show only the vertical and horizontal directions of vibration and forget all the rest. If a polarizing filter is placed in the beam, one set of vibrations is absorbed within the filter while the other passes through. The vibrations that pass are now all neatly arranged in a direction parallel to what is called the polarizing axis of the filter. Here, the polarized light has its vibrations arranged vertically. If a second polarizing filter, with its axis at right angles to the first, is placed in the polarized beam, the vertically polarized light is absorbed by the filter and nothing gets through. The polarizers are crossed. For purposes of demonstration, the filters in this diagram are shown to be quite thick. Actually, the modern polarizing material, Polaroid film, is an extremely thin sheet. 
These thin polarizing films are generally mounted between glass or plastic for protection and convenience. Before 1935, polarization had no practical uses outside the laboratory. Polarization was usually obtained by using certain natural crystals, notably calcite, which in its natural state is doubly refracting. That is, it has the peculiar property of splitting the light so that two separated images are seen. The images are polarized at right angles to each other. By using a Polaroid filter and turning it, we can extinguish either image at will. It is possible to make prisms of calcite which eliminate one of the polarized rays. They are known as nickel prisms, and they have long been used in polarizing microscopes. With them, scientists have been able to put polarized light to work in the laboratory. But nickel prisms are limited to small size and are very expensive. It was not until the invention of a Polaroid synthetic polarizing material by the scientist Edwin H. Land that polarized light could be put to work outside the laboratory. Today, these light polarizing materials are manufactured in large quantities. Their low cost makes possible a wide and constantly growing use in the service of the modern world. When you ride in one of the new airliners, you may have the good fortune to sit beside a Polaroid window. To be more accurate, it is two windows, an inner and an outer, of light polarizing glass. When you want to enjoy the view in its full brilliance, you position the windows with their axes parallel. But if the sun is directly on you, or the scene is uncomfortably bright, you can rotate the inner window pane and cut down the incoming light, or eliminate it entirely. This is an application of crossed polarizers. But it is in the automobile that the most important application of the extinction principle of crossed polarizers will ultimately be found. Here's why. That sudden blinding flash is one of the most dangerous things on the highway, the cause of countless accidents. Yet it can be eliminated completely if polarizing headlights and night driving visors or windshields are installed on all our cars. The system might be made to work like this. Headlights are fitted with polarizers whose axes are tilted at 45 degrees to the road surface. The car has a polarizing windshield visor with axes tilted in the same direction as the headlights. Or the driver may use a pair of Polaroid night driving glasses. Since his windshield and his headlights polarize the light at the same angle, he sees the illumination reflected back from his own headlamps. But when another car approaches from the opposite direction, its headlight polarizers are now crossed with our driver's visor. Instead of blinding glare, the driver sees a couple of softly glowing spots of light approaching and safely passing. Thus, with crossed polarizers, we can write the end to one of the worst hazards of the road. While this use of polarizers can abolish headlamp glare at night, it does not abolish daytime glare. That job is done by another polarizing device that we will speak of a little later. Cross polarizers also have practical application in laboratories and industrial plants. One simple but valuable device is the polariscope. This instrument has two Polaroid filters with a space between. Turning one filter so that its axis is at right angles to that of the other extinguishes the light. If certain materials, entirely colorless, are placed between the two crossed polarizers, a striking pattern of colors appears. These color patterns reveal information about the structure of the material. To begin our description of the polariscope, let's start with a piece of quartz. When placed between the two polarizers, an amazing thing happens to the polarized white light which enters the quartz. 
If we turn one of the polarizers, we get a completely new color from the quartz. The reason for this effect is that the quartz is doubly refracting, or birefringent. It changes the direction of polarization of the light passing through, and the changes are different for different colors. Here, white light is entering the first polarizer. It emerges as vertically polarized white light. As it passes through the quartz, the direction of vibration is turned. What's more, each of the colors that make up white light is turned by a different amount. Notice that the polarizing direction of the blue is rotated more than the red. The difference is so great in this case that when the red and blue beams come out, they are polarized at a large angle to each other. With the second polarizer in this position, the red passes through while the blue is stopped. If the second polarizer is rotated this way, the blue passes through and the red is stopped. In a somewhat similar way, other crystals produce colors in polarized light and other materials which are not crystals at all become birefringent and full of colors when stress is applied to them. This phenomenon of birefringence is of great value to engineers. If, for example, a scale plastic model of a bridge structure is viewed in the polariscope and a load applied, strain patterns are revealed. Thus, it is possible to forecast how the bridge will stand up under the stresses of future traffic loads. In the design of gear teeth, preliminary examination in the polariscope yields precise information that could be obtained in no other way. In many cases, serious weaknesses in structures have been caught in the design stage by this method, which is called photoelastic analysis. Using polarizers in the microscope, textile experts can predict the wearability of textile fibers. To the trained eye, the strain patterns reveal the inside story of these minute fibers. Industry finds many other uses for the polariscope. For one, the inspection of glassware. Glass shows doubly refracting regions when strains are present. Hidden faults are brought to light quickly if the light is polarized. Here's an interesting experiment. A model has been placed in a tank containing water and bentonite clay, which is made up of tiny birefringent crystals. As the fluid streams past the model, the crystals swing into line and show the pattern of the flow. With this arrangement, it is possible to analyze accurately the flow around a model of an airplane wing. Troublesome eddy currents are revealed in the design stages of this airfoil. Many crystal formations are breathtakingly beautiful when viewed in the polariscope. Here, crystals are shown growing in ordinary light. And here, in polarized light. Truly new worlds of color. Here is a sheet of colorless cellophane. It too is birefringent. It, too, changes the polarized light passing through. The effect is like a fractured rainbow. This phenomenon is used in spectacular and decorative displays. Layers of cellophane, cut in patterns, are pasted on glass or other clear transparent material and placed between polarizers. An ever-changing display. New, strange colors. Vivid startling as one of the Polaroid disks is turned. So far we have shown man-made polarization for the most part. 
Actually, polarized light exists in nature on every hand. Even though the unaided eye can't detect it, the bright sheen on this pool is almost entirely polarized light. The thousands of windows of this great building are aflame with light, with polarized light. If we want to cut it down, we use a polarizer. Yes, this glare light is undoubtedly polarized light. Let's see why. When ordinary light strikes a glass plate or almost any other reflecting surface at an angle, some components of the light tend to pass through, while other components are reflected as totally or partially polarized light. This is polarization by reflection. The most complete polarization occurs when the light strikes the reflecting surface at an angle of 33 degrees. Already familiar to most of us are Polaroid sunglasses. They eliminate glare caused by natural polarization. Pavement glare, actually painful to the eyes, is removed as if by magic. Under this combination fluorescent polarizing desk lamp, the printing on the whitest, shiniest paper can be read with ease because the harsh reflections caused by ordinary unpolarized lighting are removed. The polarizing filter is a part of the lamp. It removes from the light the vibrations that would glance from the paper as glare. Photographers, both amateur and professional, have always been plagued by natural polarization. How many photographic scenes have been complicated or even ruined by unwanted reflections? Today, with polarizing filters, these reflections can be controlled and picture quality greatly improved. Color photography gains in beauty and naturalness when a Polaroid neutral filter is used. The light of the sky is polarized in varying amounts, depending on the angle of the sun. The photographer can take advantage of this natural polarization in the sky by using a polarizing filter. Contrast between clouds and sky is heightened without affecting colors, bringing out the sky's deep blue, providing a rich setting for lovely cloud formations. You have seen a diversity of uses for Polaroid light control materials and devices. They are bringing to the public novel forms of display and entertainment, are supplying new research tools for the scientists, promise a great contribution to safety on the highway, and are continually bringing visual comfort by eliminating glare. Polaroid light control materials will affect the lives of increasing millions in the new world ahead, bringing them new conveniences, new comforts, new pleasures through this new mastery of light. Thank <laughs> you.